well. So welcome everybody, welcome to the show. Great to know that you're in and you're alive and kicking. Now today, my guest today, director, writer, Nupur Astana. And I have to say, it is an absolute honor to be talking to her today for the amount of headway that she has made in the media industry. You know, working on TV, working in Bollywood movies, and she does not stop. To the point that she's actually been on the other side of the camera as well. Now, that's something that I will also be asking her. Now, I think maybe enough of me. I think it's time to bring my guest on, honestly. Yes, Annie D on the purple sofa with my guest, Nupur Astala. So let's see. Now, where are you? Oh, yes. I... <laughs> oh, don't, Daddy, you're single. Good to know. But I'm taken. What can I say? Hi, Nupur. How are you? Hi, Ari. Good to be talking to you today. Oh, fantastic. I am so glad uh, that you're able to make it because I, I, I could have interrupted a creative streak, couldn't I? <laughs> no, no, no. It's a Sunday and I, you know, I'm making it a habit to not work on a Sunday these days. So, yeah. Oh, I, I hope this won't be classed as work then. I hope this will be classed as pleasure. I think it's pleasure. I think I'll have a lot of fun. Let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we move on, I have to say a really big thanks to Amrita, okay? Because if it wasn't for Amrita, right, I don't think we would have been talking uh, today. I so love a big Amrita, and I can see that she's just joined as well. Well, good. For, well, she's late. It's, it's 1803. She should have been here at 1800 hours. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, know, the reason why I said, you know, I hope I'm not interrupting this creative streak. I mean, has it ever happened? where you're, because you're, you write as well, and you're writing this climax, and I meant for a movie, of course. You're writing this climax, climactic moment, and somebody says, Nupur, khana lagai. Has that ever happened before? A lot of times. <laughs> a lot of times. But uh, the thing is, in the last few years, I've been living on my own, and, yeah. uh, so, you know, I work on my time. Yeah. But, oh. uh, yeah, I like the know. sound of that. No, it's happened to me. You know, I once I remember this thing where I was sleeping, I was coming to this really crucial moment. And my mum called out Annie Otto because it was in London, it was morning. And I was really angry. She said, what's wrong? I said, mom, you woke me up at this crucial moment. And I actually <laughs> went back to bed to see if I could remember it all. But of course I couldn't. So that's why I understand where you could be coming from. So no. But listen, um, Nupur, I have seen you, or, I know your interviews, your articles, you know, Twitter and Instagram. And I have to say, you are a woman with a lot of fire. Now, is it fire? Is it conviction? Determination? I just do not know. But I'm getting to feel this seems to be a common trait with directors. Because last, I think last, yes, last week I was talking to director Nuba Sinha. And he had that same kind of energy that you have, which, and I'm, I'm feeling that this could be one trait that directors have. Is this what you need? Is that the successful ingredient to have that fire? I mean, definitely you can't be a director if you don't have that uh, passion to be one because it's just such yeah. a hard road to yeah. travel. And that's the only thing that keeps you going, right? That fire in your belly to uh, yeah. tell the story you want to tell, the way you want to tell it, and to have that passion to reach out to people via your stories. Yeah. So I think that's definitely a very, very uh, sort of important ingredient in being a director. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Right. Because it's Did not you all... kind of a job that you do. It's not a job. Yeah. That's, it's, it's, it's um, you know, it, 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 for a director, it's like you have to tell that story somehow. Yeah. So somehow, yeah. Where are you going li to, I'm going to make you listen. I don't yeah. give a damn about anything else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, but was directing always in your mind? Was it that one thing that you were determined? This is all I want to do in life, be writing and uh, directing. So, you know, Ali, I've been actually directing plays since I was a kid in yeah. school, uh, you know, uh, in college. And I, and I did act in them as well in a few of them, but mostly I enjoyed directing much more. And again, yeah. when I was in college, I kind of understood, you know, I kind of understood that this was what I wanted to do later in life. Yeah. Uh, tell stories on a bigger scale, on a bigger canvas, uh, yeah. you know, in cinema. And yeah, so when I was, when I was in college, I kind of knew that this is what I wanted to do. Yeah. So, so, so this is, so then you, you know, you started off as an intern. 
Now, I would, you know, amazing how you've got that. How does one get an internship? Is it easy? And the being now having the experience that you have now being on the other side, I mean, what are you looking for? Say so for some listeners who will listen to this afterwards and a lot of people from casting as well on, on, on the group. So um, what do you think you're looking for? What needs to be on that CV if somebody is coming to you as an intern? What are you looking for? I mean, I've had a lot of interns over the years and um, I'm always looking for, uh, you know, that eagerness to learn a sense of uh, cinema, you know, an interest in cinema and eagerness to learn and yeah. uh, some of, uh, you know, and a person who, who's watched a lot of films and who wants somewhere to be a part of the filmmaking world. So, yeah. you know, I'm always looking for that. But also no. earnest and eager to learn. That's very important because then you can mold the person. Yeah. To, you know, yeah, I person. like that. Molding a person. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Seeing that ability. <laughs> oh my God, sounds dangerous. But no. <laughs> but so basically, so you worked with obviously Get the Meta. And then, is that, have I said it right? It is Get the Meta. And yes. then obviously, you went on to do uh, uh, Hoo and Hip Hip Hooray, which was an astounding success. I mean, so how were you seen a lot more seriously? Were you, were you taken seriously after Hip Hip Hooray? Is that when you kind of made your mark, you think? Uh, yeah, well, Hip Hip Hooray was my first job. My yeah. first uh, foray into independent filmmaking. And uh, uh, I thought that, you know, after that, making a film would be kind of uh, as, uh, you know, it would come easier in that sense, finances, yeah. producer. But it sort of didn't work out like that. And it took yeah. me 10 years. I made my uh, first film at YRF. So but how? How did you stay the path though? I mean, 10 years. Well, that, that's what I said. You've got to have that passion and that belief in yourself that yes, you can do it. And that uh, yes, you have it in you to do it. So you've got to yeah. uh, believe in yourself and, you know, yeah. and keep hammering away and chipping away at that door to break it down. Um, and uh, you can do it with the support, emotional support of your family and friends who also believe in yeah. you, you know, so yeah. yeah. So there wasn't one point where you were thinking, this is it, I've had it. You know what, I think I should do something else. Oh, I did think it, yeah. All right, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, quite a few times actually. And definitely uh, in, uh, you know, when my second script sort of didn't, uh, uh, was uh, shelved, yeah. I was pretty close to, you know, just saying, okay, let me join a television channel and be an executive yeah. on the other side and all of those things. And just when I was about to take that decision, uh, that door of filmmaking magically opened up to me. I got a call from YRF. Wow. And that, that just changed my life in a sense. Amazing. Yeah. Oh my God, there is a God. There is a God. <laughs> so there I, is a God somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. somewhere. We're not, yes. not going to be fussy about this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so listen so when you so when you were when you started off at that time how many women were in your position in the industry at the time yeah so that's very interesting annie when i joined the, the industry as an assistant director the, i there was the, there were only like three women on set there was me yeah. there was the hairdresser and there was the actress right? yeah and then when i started directing as well there were very few female directors and today like more than half my crew is women so you know we've seen wow. like a sea change a sea um, change in uh, you know women participating in the process of yeah. filmmaking it's absolutely so wonderful to see that so well, yeah yeah, yeah so, but you know it's funny because i know how you feel i i know how you feel about patriarchy and and everything else right and we we can't miss it <laughs> But um, in, in some ways, don't you think it works for us? So uh, at the time that there were very few women, would you not say that in a way it was a good thing because it made you stand out? Does it not have its advantages? Like, no, actually, Annie, uh, it, you know, it, it's absolutely different. I mean, I used to actually hope that I wasn't uh, standing out too much. So I would wear these oh. loose T-shirts and... Uh, loose jeans, my hair was really short, I rarely wore makeup and, uh, uh, you know, uh, jewelry, and just hoping that I would blend in, that people wouldn't notice me or see me as a woman, but would see me as an assistant director, or yeah. as a director who was, you know, you know, they're not looking at my gender, but I was hoping that they would be looking at my talent and my hard work. So oh, right. okay. it was, it was not, uh, it was not that, you know, it was not yeah. what, what you uh, feel yeah. it was. No, I know completely. Because I would have thought, you know, that you'd stand out. Oh, Oh, let's have a look at her work. So sometimes you think it might work 
to your advantage. But then you came out with, you know, two Bollywood movies under the Yash Raj banner. So why Yash Raj? Was it just, co was it just because he, he would just happen to be there? Why not uh, any other banner? Why not say under, I don't know, Mahesh Bhatt or Dharma or something like that? Why uh, Yash Raj? I, I didn't, when I came to this industry, I didn't know anybody. I had never met yeah. any of these, uh, you know, big, uh, big names. Uh, and uh, uh, I don't have anybody in my family who's from this industry. And yeah. uh, uh, so I never thought of approaching any of the big banners. I went the studio route, you know, some of the studios yeah. had just opened up. And, uh, you know, I went around trying to shock my script. It didn't work out, you know, at some point, you know, we would get an actor, but then that would, you know, or a film would be shared. So I had two scripts that I, you know, I was shopping around. And, and like I said, I mean, I never, I didn't, even think of uh, uh, knocking on Yashaj's doors. It just sort of, I just got yeah. a call one day and you could have knocked me over with a feather, quite frankly, Annie. I was like, right. really? I mean, what happened? But I mean, you know, uh, my producer Aditya Chopra had been shown some of my work by hmm. uh, Ravina Kohli, who was uh, heading by TV at that time. And I presuming he saw something in it and my hmm. work that kind of resonated with him. And uh, he called me over to meet him. And that's how it happened. You know, it's so basically... In your life, you have God, fate, and Yash Raj. <laughs> is, this, is, this, is this the ingredient for success? I'm going to put it on my menu. Oh, dear. I mean, you know, different routes are different for every filmmaker. And it just so happened that I, uh, you know, I managed to make my first two films with, with YRF. And they were absolutely, they've been wonderful producers. So, you know, I mean... Uh, if things had worked out differently, I may have been making it with someone else. So, you know, one, just, yeah. one doesn't know what, you just have to play with the cards that are dealt out to you, really. No, That's no, it. fair cop. But, you know, how, what was it like, though? You've done TV, suddenly you do, you're, you're doing Bollywood movies. Was it very different? Or did you, did you sometimes think, I think I've bitten off more than I can chew? Uh, no, not at all, actually, because I always wanted to make films. But when I did Hippie yeah. Parade, when I made Hippie Parade, it was really, I was like, okay, let me make this that I'm really passionate about. And then yeah. I hope that I'll be able to go on and make my film. And when I actually made, but, and, uh, you know, Hippie Parade was such a wonderful process and a training ground for me in that sense. You know, yeah. I sort of had, you know, you know, I could, I could, uh, 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 test the water, so to speak. I could, exp you know, I went through all kinds of experiences, which kind of prepared me for my first film. And when I started yeah. my first film, Mutsi Friendship Karoge, it turned out to be a breeze for me. You know, I was like, oh my God, I just finished shooting in 45 days. I thought I, I just warmed up. And I'm like, bro, what happened? <laughs> yeah, bring it on. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, making a, making a film is way easier than making a show. I mean, any day, any day. Oh, well, people listen to this, okay? And, you know, believe me, people, people are all, you know, find their own time to watch this. And I'm hoping, uh, you know, they take that into account, actually. So, so there you, you never know. You could have a lineup of people, you know, with their CV, right, with you, for you. <laughs> now, as far as, say, Bollywood concerned, you were still a newbie. So how easy was it then to, to get a team together, to get actors on your side, to get finance? I mean, how did you manage that, though? I mean, to me, that would be, you know, getting somebody to like your script and then getting everybody else was probably a second, another story, isn't it? I mean, the thing is that when Wired produces a film, then they take care of everything for you. Ah. So they're a big safety net. The, they provide the finance. They, they help you find, choose your team, your actors that you want, and they put it together for you, So which is, which is wonderful. So you don't actually end up doing any of the other stuff. So uh, of, you know, hunting for finance. The thing is that when, when you have the producer, it's a producer's job to get the finance, in a yeah, sense. But you make it so, it sounds so easy. It's not, no, it's is not. it? Like I said, <laughs> it took me 10 years after I made my first show to make my first film. So no, I can just tell you that there was a very <laughs> hard journey involved. <laughs> but, but people involved, once it happens, it's quick. Is that what we're saying then? It's one after the other. <laughs> uh, no, not necessarily. I mean, I, my last film was in 2014 and it's now 2020. Mm. I've made two shows in the meanwhile, uh, but I'm uh, yet to make my third film and I'm working on it right now. So inshallah, Ooh. that'll happen Good stuff. soon. Yes, yeah. I hope so. But you know, when you did say, uh, say Franship Karogi, I said, I haven't got, I haven't pronounced it properly. Franship Karogi. No, right, Fran Karogi. Franship. Fran 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 it's a pun of 
a it's a pun on the word you know on the word in delhi you know people yeah. like boys in delhi say we say fancho kregi and so it just kind of you know turn into a sort of phrase so, so when you did this it had a kind of to me a contemporary flavor i mean it's about uh, love and relationships in the time of social media applications uh and the confusion that could happen because i think it was through facebook and everything i mean would you say that literally that social media and and you know and these apps have have added to our lives then in some way or have they taken away so actually when i made the show uh when i made the film mujhse friendship karoge it was very early on you know facebook had just come in in 2008 yeah. and this was 2011 that we made it at that time we saw it as a wonderful tool to sort of you know uh connect yeah. and all of that but even then i could see that You, you know it was just so easy to be anonymous behind a computer and that's what the yeah. film was all about you know i mean uh, how you tussle you you in a sense of identity you know how you're tussling yeah. between the real you and the online you and there are two different personalities and how you know you can hide behind the computer to be someone else and all of that yeah. and of course the big ramifications of that we're seeing today you know with, yes. with Uh, we we know and you're very vocal yeah, about this loaded so yeah <laughs> yeah so it's at a cost isn't it so yes it, i mean your movie actually reflects that basic thing that the problems that we are facing today i think this yeah. is what is the ramification so yes it could help you in certain ways but as you can see the damage that it can actually do and you yeah. know this because i know you've been on detox as well haven't you i heard rumors <laughs> i thought i read somewhere you had to go on detox from social media am i yes. correct <laughs> yes so, I did and I I I just deleted Facebook and Twitter off my phone a few days ago as well. So you know I just keep doing these things otherwise you can just go crazy. I mean Yeah. Yeah, I know. I feel on social media. In your in your like so now you have done the movie and now we're in the modern times. Do you think relationships will ever be the same again with apps and social media? Do you think we've gone away from the old relationship kind of a traditional relationship to this new relationship? Do you think it'll ever be the same? I mean I hope we go back to it I hope so I mean you, think? Uh, you know uh well, the thing is that you know the pandemic has is sitting right in the middle of this explosion of social media as well so the both have yeah. collided right now and it's turned into some kind of beast right now but I really hope that we can go back to original ways of communicating and uh, sort of the offline uh, communication will sort of rule again one day uh, yeah. and then maybe you will be doing a movie on that. We just have to learn how to manage social media better. We just have to learn how to manage all of it. I mean, I think that should be just a new a new topic in school probably. I think how to how to manage it, I, you know, I, and that could be a story, your next story as well. That could be your your next modern story. You never know. You never know. You get started here. <laughs> it started here. But then of course you did be a uh, beva kufia. right and i'm sorry for pronouncing it wrong my my you know my, my pronunciation is absolutely crap but i do try you know i do speak hindi but you know when i say these words it just doesn't come out right um uh, i mean you did that with uh, rishi kapoor sonam kapoor and you did that with ayushman um and i have to say this this seems to be a similar contemporary kind of uh, a direction where you're dealing with modern relationships yet again in another way where people are living together you know without you know without being married or in this kind of a uh, a formal uh, kind of a i guess a ceremony that we we all like to see in the indian culture now for me that was also pushing the boundaries as well and you also portrayed sonam as a very strong woman now the way you directed that was that deliberate did you want sonam to be that uh, that strong is that how you're directing it as you want women to be today or was that just just by it just happened to be like that uh no i think that for me any female character in a movie would be very important i mean and i would uh, uh she was written like that in a sense and for me the film yeah. was always in a sense a triangle between uh, between ayushman's character rishi kapoor's character and sonam's character and yeah. uh, sonam brought a lot to the table as well with her own personality and with with what with with the uh, the character that we had devised and uh i think that it for me again like you said mentioned relationships i think for me it was a great uh, uh you know what i wanted to explore with that film really was how consumerism today our consumerist lifestyles have taken over our relationships like yeah. just like how social media has now taken over our relationships yeah.
at that time when i made it in 2014 uh, you know it, it was all about what are your what are the brands that you're wearing what are you yeah. consuming and all of those things and how does money sort of impact your relationship so these were all the kind of things that i wanted to sort of address in 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 the film via ayushman and sonam's relationship so uh, but yeah, that's so the message that you were trying to portray that was the message you were trying to portray yes. but yes. how was it received what is the one thing because i remember reading like people were going on about what sonam was wearing and it kind of missed the mark what yes. happened i have no idea i just you know i i i i feel sad that it kind of missed the mark and that it didn't have the impact that i felt that uh, you know if people had sort of you know maybe maybe we i didn't work hard on the script enough uh, well or maybe it, it's just where we are that, Maybe I should have chiseled that message in, uh, you know, uh, harder, further. You know, I should have, I should have hammered it in a little more. I don't know, but you know, you learn everything from, a, you know, you learn something from mm. every film that you make. And uh, a, a yeah. big disclaimer: ignore the ignore the attire, <laughs> the beginning of the movie. That's what we need. I think that's strong enough to say it doesn't matter what she's wearing. Okay, yeah. just look at the brand. <laughs> look at the brand. No, but you know, if for example, I mean, do you feel that there's a difference in the way that a story is treated depending on the gender of the director? Oh. Uh, I don't think so because uh, I I mean, personally, I think that I would appreciate a time when there is nothing like a female filmmaker or a male filmmaker that we're just yeah. filmmakers. I mean, that is the ideal. And I think that uh most directors today uh my peers we're all seeing people actors and actresses as human beings you know yeah and therefore uh i hope that we are not you know i i just yeah i i mean i hope that the gender doesn't make such a big difference like for example i mean you know people have asked me that do you think four more shots would have been different directed by a man and i'm like no you know if if the man can see into the woman's heart and mind why should it why should it be any different well you know? if if is 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 the question isn't it if you well, could i have just made a film called thappar i know this is true it was lovely <laughs> true. so you know i mean there you go yep that it requires so there's very limited though isn't it but you know what but what i like about you i have to say no but i mean i if i had to look into this basket of nupurastana's collection i mean i also noticed you know is it romul and jugal um was it have i said that correctly so yes. um so i have oh that's one thing i've got thank god right so you know a relationship this is a homosexual relationship you know but you know between two men i mean you seem to just go at it you're not scared of anything or anyone what I made you Oh you were scared oh, with this one. <laughs> I was a bit scared with this one. I thought it was a great story to tell. You know, I've been yeah. a literature student and and uh, it's Shakespeare at the end of the day. It's yeah. Romeo and Juliet with two boys. So, uh, you know, that challenge was fantastic, but of course you're always scared of uh, of uh, uh, the response. <laughs> the response <laughs> and many other people, things. You know, yeah, I, am I going to get lambasted by Pyrrhus or or even I, i was also worried that i was uh, that i was not going to be able to do the lgbt community um uh justice in that sense i didn't want to let them down that cat down in a sense yeah so i think so i was a bit scared but then i i just told myself that you know before treating this as a story about two boys i need to treat this as a story about two human beings yeah before beyond gender so love is beyond gender right i mean yeah. it doesn't matter at the end of the day who you're loving So that's what gave me the strength kind of to just tell the story and then once I started I sort of didn't think about it I have to admit yeah. I just sort of just went ahead and did my thing Right because I remember I mean because I've also chatted with Onir who is you know the director yeah. who is openly gay yes. and you know and we were talking about the kind of movies that people are doing the modern movies on you know this I mean you did yours was yours pre amendment of section 377 yes. which may, which was obviously then very risky um and um so i can imagine what you were going through but then i know risk probably equates with oh yeah i want to get my teeth into this one so it, it's on the similar you know kind of yeah. getting a feel of what you're like that's that's going to kind of almost challenge you in some way and i remember talking to honor and he he did say that he he finds it very difficult to see 
heterosexual people creating a movie uh, referring to the LGBT community because sometimes they, 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 they just don't get it right. They just don't get it right. So what research did you have to do though? What did you have to look at or who did you talk to and, you know, before you even went ahead? So I spoke to a few of my uh, gay friends quite a bit about, mm. uh, you know, their own relationships with the, uh, see, like I'm straight. So like, you know, uh, yeah. where honor is concerned, I may not have done a great job. I don't mm. know. But, uh, but I remember I spoke to honor as well. Yeah. One of the people oh, there you go. So well. then you had a good, <laughs> a good Apart mentor. from a couple of other friends who are, who are not filmmakers, but who are gay. And I, and I had yeah. long chats with them about relationships. And then I just went with my gut, you know, and for me, the show was really for a lot of heterosexual people. Yeah. I wanted to make it slightly mainstream. And it was about acceptance, acceptance yeah. of families, uh, you know. Um, and therefore, I wanted to tell the story in a way that would be sort of uh, not just palatable, but also acceptable for people like my mother, for, you know, yeah. people at large who, who may not uh, 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 have been able to watch a straight out LGBT uh, show mm. or film. I mean... So while it is an LGBT, while it is this love story of two boys, their families, their their reactions and their acceptance was a big part of the show. I and mean, did you, but did you have to release it on the digital platform or was it not so. possible to put it on this uh, build, uh, big screen, was it? I think so, because I remember when my producer, Rekha Kapoor, she wanted this to be a film and it was actually uh, written as a film script by my friend Anu Menon, who just made Chakuntala yeah. actually. And, uh, but they couldn't make it then because, uh, uh, you know, Ekna said that it would just have been banned in, in censorship, right? So uh, uh, when she sent this to me as a, uh, you know, she sent me the script saying, do you want to make this as a web series? I immediately jumped at it and I said, yes, you know, as a series, it would be great. And she was just starting her digital platform, Art Balaji, right then. Yeah. And I, I spoke to Anu as well and uh, she said, you must do it. So, you know, I mean, I read the script and of course we needed to change it around for, for yeah. uh, you know, to make it into a show. And it had to be a digital show. They couldn't have gone on television because it would have been censored. It couldn't have been, the mm. censors wouldn't have passed it on, uh, on the big screen. So really, digital was the only platform that was sort of viable. It. But then if you had done the movie now, do you think it was much easier? Because obviously now there are a lot of movies, uh, you know, dealing with addressing this kind of issue. So if you had move, made that movie today, it would have been slightly different, I assume. I mean, the script would have been different. It could still be right. a love story, but the script would have been different. Their, their obstacles would be different. And even though the law has been passed, decriminalizing homosexuality, yeah. uh, it's, there is still a social stigma about it, around it. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. So that would oh. sort of, the script would be different, I think. You know, sure. I mean, looking at the stigma, did you, how easy was it then to get actors to do, to play the part? Because I know from previous experience, talking to other people, uh, there are a lot of people who are very hesitant about doing roles, homosexual roles, if you talk to a guy. How easy was it for you? Uh, so we auditioned a lot of people uh, for uh, Rommel's character. Jugal, yeah. we found actually within the second audition or something, I, you know, we, uh, oh. uh, found him. And both the boys were very gung-ho, you know, they were uh, starting off their careers and they, yeah. uh, they both had girlfriends. They both didn't uh, mind. Oh, cool. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, I mean, end of the day, yeah. it was 2016 when we made it. So it's really not that far back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's in fact almost on the cusp, actually. Almost something you're yes. just behind, <laughs> I think. And then, but then you see, I think, I think you, you, you're fired up again because then you have Ekta Kapoor, you've got Anuman again, and you're there, and we have four more shots. And it seems to come to you uh, on a plate. So, you know, you've got this movie, you know, which is almost, uh, I guess, you know, I guess reference to, I guess, the Indian version, four more shots of Sex in the City uh, in America, which I have to say, when I saw that, I, I kind of sat back like this when I first, and I will tell you that's my honest first reaction. And season I'm from- Season two. I see it, season, oh, all of them, because you were season two, but generally yeah. the whole concept of uh, four more shots, I have to say I sat back and I know my reaction. And I think maybe it's because if I was in a, I've watched Sex in the City. I didn't sit back with that, but I sat back with four more shots. 
And that is amazing because maybe I'm linking it to, to, to India and Indians and stuff like that, thinking, oh, my God, I, if my mum walked in now, I'd have to put it off. You know, I, I was in that situation. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I must tell you that I didn't watch it with my parents. My parents saw it on their own. But I must tell you something very interesting that my aunt said in California. She saw it there and she said that, you know, if it's okay when I watch uh, you know, Western women yes. getting intimate on screen. But when it comes to Indian women living this lifestyle, I feel really uh, shaken. And I was like, yes. you know. Why? But, I mean, you know, we have to accept reality at some point and we have to accept that female I sexuality just, is important. I think we're just, it's just ingrained uh, in us. I mean, what did your, what did your, you know, mom or dad think? Uh, when I didn't like it. My dad didn't like it. He was like, oh God, understatement. what are these girls doing? <laughs> Lo kya <laughs> yeah, I think my mom was secretly proud. Okay. So yeah, yeah, she enjoyed oh. it. She enjoyed it. Right, so here's the question. So why did it take three women to make to, to get this going? Why did it take women to get this show going? If we are all capable of doing, you know, doing any particular show, we don't have to be a particular gender or from a particular community. Why did it take three women to do this? Well, hats off to Rangita. Uh, hats hmm. off to her. You know, she's the creator of the show. And uh, she wanted to make a show about women and yeah. their life, urban women in South Bombay. She's a South Bombay girl herself. And yeah. I think it's tough to her. Yeah? She took that, uh, she took the concept to Amazon. They loved it as well. And, uh, you know, that's where it took off. And both, both are, you know, our writer Devika, our dialogue writer Ishita, my DOP, the first director Anu Menon, you know, we're all women on the set, all, you know, this there, is there are women all around. And that's why, I mean, I think the show has great energy. And, we sort of, I mean, I can talk about season two because that's what I've made. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sure Anu feels the same as well about her season that, uh, you know, we, we didn't want to sensationalize anything. It was, it was just, it was really, we wanted to present women as they are today. Urban women, I mean, I know realities are very different for women, say, yeah. in Kanpur or Lucknow or, you know, where, where, wherever else in the country. But the thing is, this is also a reality. And the fact that this reality this is their reality. It doesn't negate their uh, stories. And, you know, this is also a story that needs to be told, you know, apart from other stories of other women in the country. So, I mean, uh, you didn't... But I think it's very is... difficult for people to digest. Yes, uh, yes. Digest it. And, and I think that when you are sort of uncomfortable with, with, uh, with something, like, for example, you just, uh, uh, you know, confess that it sort of somewhere made you uncomfortable. You just sat back. Yeah, I did. My aunt, I for did. example. My aunt, for example. Uh, when it makes you uncomfortable, sometimes you reject it. But then when you go back and think about it, this is a reality. This, this happens. There are women like this. Is this every woman's story in India? Oh, no, of course not. And we're never saying it. You know, we, we, we never said that it is. So, yeah, I mean, but I is, lost track of the question. No, no, this is it. This is totally it. This is exactly where I'm going because you didn't stop. You've got a woman who's having relationships, you know, she's single, she's strong, she's working, almost like a power woman. You've got one who's divorced, you've, and, you know, trying to manage her life. You've got one that's a lesbian, for goodness sake. I mean, you've got everything in the mix. I mean, I mean, how much can we digest? <laughs> I know it's a storm, you know, so you can imagine a bit of reflux in the system. But, um, you know, so is India ready for this, though? Or is it your job to keep pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, that it is? Is India ready? Is our culture ever going to accept it fully, though? What do you say? Well, the Kama Sutra and the Khajurao temples came from India itself, right? I mean, yeah, but we don't talk yeah. about it, remember? We don't do much with it. It's just there. <laughs> it's just there, yeah. No, <laughs> just I think India is definitely ready for it because it will shock you to know, Annie, that... Uh, a lot of our audience for FOMO shots comes from uh, young audiences in their early 20s, um, mid 20s, till 30, 35, whatever, uh, from not just from main cities, but also from smaller towns where they see our women, our girls, our four girls, yeah. and get a lot of inspiration because these are girls on screen ruling the screen they are living lives on their own terms and how seductive is that annie and i'm not it talking is. about sex here i'm just talking about the sheer 
uh, power to go out and make your mark in the world, however you want to do it and however you want yeah. to live your life. But at least you're living life on your own terms. And to see girls do that, uh, our girls do that, yeah. is very uh, inspiring for girls who may be uh, sitting somewhere else battling their own insecurities or battling their mm. own battles with family or, or their circumstances. And... Uh, yeah, I, and I think that's why it's been a success because of sheer, because of uh, women accepting it so much more than, uh, you know, I don't know how men feel. A, a lot of men told me they liked it. A lot of men told me they didn't like it. Why do the girls have to be so out there? I'm like, you know, it's okay. You can't please everybody. It's fine. I'm fine. You know, once but, I make something, it's out there. You don't have to like or agree with everything that I say. But yes, so I told you my initial reaction. But I have to say, I, I think later on, I was a bit envious. And I have to say, I was very envious of these women that they had reached that confidence level so early on in life. And I remember thinking, I wish that I was that person when, when I was young. And it's like I missed a whole kind of, uh, my whole life. Now I'm at this stage and I'm thinking, I, I've only gained that confidence now. And I was thinking to myself, if I had seen it then or if somebody was there then to show me the way, maybe I would have been a different person. Maybe I would have taken a different route in life. So actually, it did make me think and it made me envious. Why didn't you make this earlier? <laughs> so why did you direct I'm it sorry, earlier? Annie. <laughs> Wrong me. We should address that question to Rangita, the, the creator of the show. Why didn't she come up with the concept earlier? Absolutely. So yeah, well, you know what? I take this very seriously. So... So it wasn't just about TRPs, is that, I mean, so when you brought the thing, to, so when Anu brought the thing together, so was it something that was close to her heart and your heart for directing and accepting uh, it? Because you also contributed to season two scripts as well, didn't you? So was yes. it something from the heart or was it really a lot to do with TRPs and shock factor as well? Because that's what gets TRPs. This is where we are, let's be honest. It's that kind of perverse nature of human beings to want to watch something like this, which is kind of alien to our culture. Oh, uh, so, sorry, I'm just going to switch on a light. Uh, no, Annie. I mean, when I said yes to doing season two, mm. I had a TV, a season one wasn't even out. Yeah. Right? I saw it on the edit table. Rangita showed it to me on the edit table. Uh, at least three months or four months before it released, uh, season one went on air. And I said yes on the basis of the fact that this was something that I could add my voice to. It was a story about four girls mm. uh, owning the screen. And where do you get to see four girls on a poster telling the story of their lives? Yeah, it's yeah. like, wow. I mean, I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to add my voice to it, say, you know, uh, and uh, yeah. If somebody's asked so, me for uh, my voice. Never, I had no idea, Annie, whether it would be a hit or a flop. I had no idea when I said yes to it. You know, I, I have to uh, say, I wished I was there. I wish that somebody had come to me and said, Annie, come and add your voice. I said, yes, I, I would have loved to. Honestly. Oh, dear. I missed, I missed an opportunity. But, um, but gee, I ask you the question again, though. Would a man have done justice to this particular show? Why not? I mean, you know, um, Sex in the City has multiple directors over multiple seasons, right? Some of them mm. are women, some of them are men, right? And I don't think that it would have mattered, really. Mm. Then why I do they approach you? Like I would like to believe that it wouldn't have mattered. Okay, we've got to be in that idea. Well, because they approached you, Nabur, to, to do this. Why did they do that? And why not a man then? Unless they, they like did. Sorry? <laughs> Maybe they like my work. Well, this is true. This is, I, even I'm being stereotypical here. Can you see? Can you feel it? Yes. I, I've even got... <laughs> but, you know, you, know, you know, having this conversation. So do you think then women are fairly represented then in the media industry? Do you think we, we have a fair chance compared to a man? Sorry, sorry, could or you is it, that? Yeah, do you think women are represented fairly in the media industry or anywhere for that matter? Look, I've also been looking at the difficulties and the obstacles, you know, in light of a current Twitter a message. We're not going to detail, but, you know, people, women, obviously, the things that they have to go through to do what they need to do in media and the things that they're asked to do. And, you know, we've got the Me Too movement. Are we fairly represented in the media industry or not? Well, not 
not yet, Annie. Of course not. Well, we will get Why not? There. Why not? Is it because it's difficult to get in or the things that we're asked no, to do in exchange? Are you talking about directors specifically or are you talking yes. about... Yes. I mean, I'd say behind the camera. Behind the camera. So um, we are a patriarchal society. We have always, as a culture... Now, certain things, there weren't many female doctors earlier. Now, there are a lot of female doctors. There weren't female engineers. Now, there are female engineers. Initially, be, you know, I mean, I don't need to tell you how many women directors there are vis-a-vis uh, -vis male mm. directors, but it must be like 15%, 10%, yes. 12, between 10 and 17%, I think. That's yeah. the ratio. And uh, so, of course, there is some kind of bias, but uh, I think that's slowly getting eradicated. Yeah. More and more women are asserting themselves. And I think there are so many more platforms now. Earlier, yeah. there was just the box office. And somehow, yeah. you know, it was considered that male directors will be able to, uh, you know, direct better, so to speak, yeah. than a woman, which is ridiculous. But, you know, slowly that was broken as well. And yeah. uh, now, we, you know... And so I think more and more women are coming up. We're trying to break that glass, the, the, you know, the glass ceiling and break down that yeah. door. And I think it's a slow process, but it's happening, Annie. It's happening. And so do you think with, the advent... With, with, and with yeah, the advent with your, of digital, yeah. you know, it, it, yeah. it's, it, 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 there are just so many more avenues to tell your stories on. There's so just so many more platforms to tell your story on. Well, well, I'm hoping that a lot more women will actually see this as really positive and literally, you know, come on the game. I think it's fantastic. And it's something they can do from home as well. So it works for everybody. It's a win-win situation. But listen, you've also been, look, not, and I talk about behind the camera, but you've also been on the other side as well with Karak, haven't you? You've also oh, had God. your fair share of acting. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. How know, did I that did happen? It as a lark. I did it as a lark. <laughs> Uh, the director asked me to audition. I said, yeah, sure. I auditioned. It was a lot of friends in front of the camera, behind the camera. And I just went ahead and I did it. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But did you? Now do you know what actors go through? Do you have a bit of sympathy? 100%. <laughs> a lot of sympathy. I think I'm now much kinder to my actors. I think uh -huh. I understand their vulnerability and insecurities much, much better. I also understand their strengths better. So, yeah, it was a great learning experience for me. For me, Kadak was fantastic. Yeah. So, have you changed the way that you work now with them? Have you? Uh, what are you going to do? Have you? Uh, have you changed I'm the way? I'm definitely more patient. I'm definitely much yeah. more patient, much more um, uh, accepting, much more. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. I understand. I, I feel like I understand the actors where they're coming from much better. Oh, oh, lovely! So it was well worth it. Well worth it. Totally. <laughs> I think it was deliberate choice. Totally. So what's happening in the future? What are you thinking now? What are you working on? Are you allowed to talk about it? So I'm creating a show. I can't tell you for which platform right now. Oh. Creating a show, okay. uh, directing it as well. Uh, working on the second draft of a film screenplay. So inshallah, mm -hmm. so all of this will hopefully uh, Is that it? soon. Is that all I'm going to have? What? Okay, yes. what? Okay. Okay, is there, can you mention the issue, any issue that you're addressing? At least you can't. Drama. Okay, uh, okay I'm going to ask genre. you another question. I'm going to ask you another question. Let me see if I can get it around the other way. Okay. If you, <laughs> I'm not giving up. So if you had a chance to address an issue that hasn't been talked about yet, what would it be? What kind of an issue are you just waiting to get your teeth into? What kind of a script or what kind of genre even is that? Psychological interplay between people. So drama. Hmm. Essentially, that's what I would love to sink my teeth into. Yeah. yeah an, is action that, an action film. Okay. So this might have to, I'm looking forward to this. Okay. So I need to know, I need to have updates <laughs> to see when Definitely. this could be happening. But listen, it's all your inspiration driven from your real life experiences. Because I tell you why, because I teach English literature, okay? And, you know, when I, when I were discussing literature, I'm always getting my students to think, you know, in the mind of the character, what would motivate such an action? And it's usually something that has happened in his, his or her childhood or, you know, or some social issue that was prevalent at the time. So what are you inspired by? Is this what inspires you then? Absolutely, Annie. All, all creative people will tell you that they draw from life. 
life yeah. is the best best creative you know if you live in a bubble then what are you going to be actually talking about so if you felt some pain if you've been through experiences all those things add up and you know and and all writers and directors will pour all experiences of you know their own experiences as well as those mm. people that they know uh so you know friends and family's experiences will also be you will also find themselves mm. into uh you know into the work and that's what you know life is a big big teacher yeah absolutely if you're willing to the, how you take uh what's happening in society around you and uh you know the world, yeah. world at large around you how you take that and and, and sort of uh, you know you uh no sir what's happening around you plus your experiences and then kind of figure out what story you really want to tell what's important to you what is your voice telling you to say and hopefully if you can be true to that voice then i think it'll be a damn good piece of work that you uh, that you uh, sort of uh, take out of you well you know i'm talking to anuba sinha just uh, you know just before you and he said anger seems to be the one emotion that that really drives him what what emotion would you say drives you to give your your best product uh i don't know if it's anger uh, you know his last three films have really emanated from that anger and that wonderful because he had that yeah. force to tell it uh, yeah. for me it's really about uh, for me what drives me is 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 uh, uh, you know the nuance between uh, between the interplay between people between emotions and uh, really mm. uh, uh, a sense of self you know what does one really want what is truly mm. important to me what what you know so there are a lot of questions of self who am i what am i looking for so therefore in a lot of my work you'll see that as well as a thread mm. whether it's with sifranchukur okay, who am i in that sense or bevakufia mm. or uh, you know rumbel and juggal you know what do i want you know who am i like what am i looking for so it sounds slightly slightly crazy and existentialist when i say it like that but i think that that yeah. sense of self sense of searching for self is some even even in uh, uh, four more shots please that yeah. thread sort of finds its way through my work uh, without me actually pinning that down and saying that yes this is what my work is on what, this is what mm. my project is about or my film or my show is about i don't pin it like that but then when i look back uh, once it's done and i'm like oh fuck you know that's what i was talking about mm. yeah know? oh even i did here you know uh, <laughs> sort of you also find your way why you're making yeah. it you know so you start making it and then finally by the half way through you realize that you're on that journey and it's just this work that you've yeah. created is just you know it's just kind of become this yeah. uh, it, it's got a journey of its own you know so no yeah. fantastic stuff well you know what i can't wait for your new stuff whatever that may be whether it's drama or psychological thriller or psychological interplay <laughs> relationships you, so you never know hint hint <laughs> i want the scoop <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Nipa, thank you so much for joining me this evening. It it's been really enlightening, really interesting to see the mind behind, you know, all of these shows and movies because, you know, you do have a particular theme and a particular message running through them. So it was interesting to get to know the person behind it actually this evening. You know, I yeah, thank you so much and you've had a lot of people actually making comments. There's some people that want to work with you by the way. No person uh, you never uh, know. <laughs> I didn't get round to re- okay now I can see my friend Nimisha is saying some uh, you need to show vulnerabilities. Yes Nimisha I will. <laughs> Thank you so much Ani for having me. Absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Now to my list Yeah, so and to my listeners, thank you so much for for being on here and taking part today and really listening to this. And you know, hopefully you will get something out of it. And I hope it's all positive. And if you want to see Nupur apart from the IGTV, you will see her on my website as well, anid.in. If if you know, if you're just surfing on the net, you will see her. You can also read my articles. But if you're a YouTube kind of a person, you will also see her. on you know on my youtube channel anid in conversation with so you can draw it up again and again as many times as you like and be inspired nupur once again thank you so much an absolute pleasure and i want you to get back to your your new stuff and your new script i don't want to be i don't want to be a spanner in the works <laughs> no no this is my sunday this is my holiday day <laughs> but still, the mind is the mind is still working i know the mind is still working <laughs> thanks so much for having me anid thank you Thank you. Thank you so much. You. <laughs> bye bye. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.